Okay, so today's video is gonna be a short, fun look at one of the most interesting things I've seen in my entire life. There is an independent research organization in San Francisco called OpenAI. It was founded by Elon Musk and a few other investors in 2015. In 2019, they got a $1 billion investment from Microsoft, and they've done some pretty remarkable things. According to their website, their mission is to, quote, ensure that artificial general intelligence benefits all of humanity. The Open AI Charter describes the principles that guide us as we execute on our mission. To put it simply, they want to use computers to make the world a better place. Want to see some of the stuff that they've done so far? Here's artificial intelligence learning how to fight like sumo wrestlers. Here's AI learning how to shoot a ball and the other AI learning how to block it. Here are neural networks learning how to solve a Rubik's Cube with a human-like robot hand. And here's AI playing hide and seek. I am not an expert in any of this stuff whatsoever, but I'm just going to try to explain informally to the best of my ability. Artificial intelligence intelligence is often based on this process. First, you give the computer a task like these blue figures hiding and the red figure trying to seek them. Because these are computer simulations, they can run millions and millions of simulations where the figures are learning over time. First, the hiders learn the simplest method of not being found by just running away. Then the hiders learn to block the doors with boxes. Then the seekers learn how to use the ramp to get over the walls. Then the hiders learn how to make a shelter for themselves entirely. Then eventually, the seekers learn to use the ramp to jump onto the box and then surf the box around the playing field until they find the hiders. Yeah, I know. So what happens when you take this level of technology and say, hey, what if Kanye West rapped Lose Yourself by Eminem? Yeah. This bomb was sweaty, knee sleep, palms are heavy, this bomb ain't on, it's spread already, mom, get it. Jukebox is a, quote, neural net that generates music, including rudimentary singing, as raw audio in a variety of genres and artist styles. We're releasing the model weights and code, along with a tool to explore the generated samples. So you can read a whole paper on this, you can view the actual code they use to build it, but I'm gonna run through what I think are the most interesting pieces of this puzzle. When you scroll down to dataset, you can see that they trained the model using 1.2 million songs, half of which are in English, and then they paired the corresponding lyrics and the metadata. The metadata is the artist of a given song, the genre, the year it came out, the mood of the song, and playlist keywords associated with each and every song. Eventually, the model came up with this interactive chart to determine what the main genres are, notable musicians in each, and how similar each sound is to one another. As you can see, rock and pop are sort of at the epicenter of everything, and once you look at individual musicians, you can check what the model thinks their sound is closest to. You go look at somebody like Drake, and yes, he's in the hip-hop category, but Jukebox placed him further away from traditional rappers like Tupac, Bone Thugs, and Twista, and closer to R&B musicians like Trey Songs. It is so interesting scrolling through all the these names, faces, and genres, and seeing that this model, artificial intelligence, thinks that musically, Dolly Parton and Jennifer Lopez are pretty similar. Yeah, there are bound to be some questionable decisions, but in a way, it's kind of hard to argue with. I can sit here and say that Coldplay and Radiohead being right on top of each other is baffling, but this model has objective, concrete reasoning why it thinks they're so similar, and I can't disagree with that. There's a ton of complicated stuff that went into how Jukebox was going to create original lyrics for songs, there's stuff about the limitations of what it can and cannot do, etc. But eventually, they started to test it out. In August of 2019, they had Jukebox try to mimic the sound of a piano and create an original song based on that concept. Then they wanted some kind of pop sound. <laughs> In October, they wanted something that sounded like Bob Marley. And something that sounded like Louis Armstrong. Thank you, I think we're 
By January, they tried out hip hop, and it came out sounding like an angry combination of most deaf and random stuff from the mid 90s. <laughs> And the imitation David Bowie is more gibberish, but you can definitely hear a David Bowie sound. So after many months of machine learning, we have some much more polished examples with clear original lyrics and very specific sounds for Jukebox to try and replicate. For example, the researchers wanted a pop song sung like Katy Perry, they inputted a few lyrics, and this is what Jukebox came up with. <laughs> The voice sounds like Katy Perry, and it's insane to me how they can capture emotion within the vocals. She, it, whatever you want to call it, sounds like it's yearning and lusting. It's unbelievable. Also, the glitchiness of some of the transitions from word to word makes this more interesting than the average Katy Perry song. It's like you took Katy Perry's most emotional track ever and had a depressed electronic musician mess with it a little bit. It's cool. P.S. By the end of the song, you'll see Jukebox trying to come up with this big grand finale with hard-hitting vocals and falsettos. Clearly, for whatever reason, this aspect of pop music was harder to replicate. <laughs> The next one I want to look at is when they wanted heavy metal, which was supposed to sound like rage, they inputted some lyrics, and this is what happened. What's most interesting to me here is just how different this is from the first example, and it's just as good, if not better. If you're taking the average Katy Perry pop song versus the average Rage heavy metal song, there are tons of blatant differences. For one, the vocal inflection on this Jukebox Rage song matches the aggressive, darker tone, which is, again, so cool. We heard imitation Katy Perry yearning over a computer lover, and now imitation Peter Wagner is intimidating in its delivery, even with lyrics that are more comforting than anything, but that is a common trope of heavy metal. A song that might sound kinda scary, but deep down, it means well. Then we can start talking about how Jukebox is able to come up with these instrumental breakdowns, and I could go on and on. <laughs> Something about this feels more repetitive than what you would hear in real heavy metal, but it's also admirable because it sounds so strange that only a machine would come up with it. In the re-renditions tab, they gave Jukebox all the lyrics to an existing song, they wanted it to be done in the same genre as the original and sung by the same musician, but being that the AI was conditioned with over a million different tracks, the instrumental that it comes up with, and the tones and cadences of how it sings this song, is not going to be the same as the original. Here's the real Ella Fitzgerald singing at long last love. Is it an earthquake or simply a shock? And here's Jukebox's version of how it thinks Ella Fitzgerald would sing at long last love without knowing what the original song sounds like. Is it a cosplay? Oh, shivery a shock. Here's the same sort of thing with Who Killed It by Nods. Now she's on the lamp, she made it out with 200 grand. What a scam. While these two compete on who's And Jukebox's version of Who Killed It by Nas. Damn, she's on the she made it out with 200 grand. What a stand. While these two compete on There are a ton of different ways that they can do these re-renditions too. In the completions tab, you can see what happens when you give the first 12 seconds of a song, like Uptown Funk. This shit, that ice cold Michelle fight for that white girl. And then you see the craziness that unfolds when Jukebox tries to guess what the rest of the song might sound like. Eventually, we make our way to the Fun Songs tab, where they take an existing song and have it performed in the style of a new musician, which in turn changes a lot about the original. That's how we can get Frank Sinatra singing stuff from La La Land. City of stars, 
Are you signing? And Kanye rapping Lose Yourself. Yeah, his mom was sweaty, knees sleep, palms are heavy, his bond and on spread already, mom. Yeah. So in general, I wanted to talk about this organization and their endeavors for a few reasons. One, it's just ridiculously cool. I think it's very interesting, and I thought you might be interested as well. Two, from a technology standpoint, it can give you an idea of what AI and machine learning is capable of right now, and how much it can and will change the world in the future. And three, machine-generated music could be its own genre in the near future, or beyond that, it could just be a part of the music landscape and we won't even be able to tell the difference. Right now, it sounds like glitchy, remixed versions of original songs, but that's within a year of this project existing. We already have robot social media influencers, so who's to say that within five or ten years, we won't have fully automated robot musicians making albums from scratch that sound just as good, if not better, than our greatest human musicians. The ethics of that is a video for another day, but for now, we'll just have to wait and see. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check out OpenAI and Jukebox. It's linked in the description. Please check them out. If you want to support the channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media at RenshawHS. You can buy my merch, support my Patreon, and thank you again. I'll see you soon.